Buddha is your real body, your original mind, which remains pure and radiant, reveals itself before its owner, and it's inherently void and empty, silent and still. Zen Master Xuan Hua. The human soul is the lamp of God. Rabbi Schnell Zalman. There are as many paths to God as there are souls on earth. Idris Shah. As we saw in part one, the mystic path offers a deeply personal, direct experience of the divine that goes beyond orthodox practices and dogmatic confines. It is a spiritual quest that seeks an experiential understanding of the ultimate reality, often characterized by unity, ineffability, and an experiential knowledge that transcends intellectual comprehension. This video, Mysticism Part 2, will examine the mystical traditions as found in Buddhism, Judaism, and Islam. In Buddhism, mysticism often manifests as meditative practices and philosophical insights that transcend the ordinary consciousness. Buddhist practices such as Vipassana, insight, and Samatha, tranquility meditation, lead to profound experiences culminating in Nirvana, the ultimate liberation from suffering and cycle of free births. Esoteric Buddhism of Vajrayana, with its tantric practices, represents another facet of Buddhist mysticism, promising accelerated paths to enlightenment. In contrast, Jewish mysticism, popularly known as Kabbalah, has its root in the ancient Jewish traditions. It offers a mystical interpretation of the Torah, infusing the religious text with esoteric meanings that lead to a deeper understanding of God and creation. The mystical tradition of Kabbalah goes beyond the ritualistic and legalistic aspects of Judaism, delving into the metaphysical realms, proposing a complex and intricate model of the divine reality. Similarly, in Islam, the mystical dimension known as Sufism presents an inward journey towards divine love and knowledge. Sufism, with its distinctive practices of Hikra, remembrance of God, Sema, whirling dance, and ascetic lifestyle, aims to purify the heart, facilitating a deeper connection with God. The Sufi mystical quest is for an experiential realization of Tawhid, the fundamental Islamic belief in the oneness of God. Interestingly, these diverse traditions share several thematic similarities. An emphasis on direct experience, the idea of unity with the divine, and the transformative power of love. Buddhism is rich in both spiritual and philosophical traditions. Buddhism provides a multitude of ways for practitioners to explore and connect with the most profound aspects of existence. Central to the praxis and experience of Buddhism is a strand of mysticism that offers an experiential understanding of the deep nature of reality, transcending ordinary consciousness and human perception. The mystical vein of Buddhism underscores the direct personal experiences of enlightenment and liberation from cyclic existence, or what is called in Buddhism, samsara. The mystical journey begins with the Four Noble Truths that the Buddha preached in his first sermon after attaining enlightenment. These truths lay down the reality of suffering, dukkha, its origin, the possibility of its cessation, and the path to such cessation culminating in the attainment of nirvana. This forms the foundation for the mystical path in Buddhism, guiding practitioners toward a direct realization of these truths in their personal experience. A profound form of Buddhist mysticism manifests itself in Zen Buddhism. Zen, derived from the Chinese word Chan and the Sanskrit Dhyana, meaning meditation, puts emphasis on direct experience. Zen's primary method 
is meditation, or Zazen, through which practitioners aim to realize their inherent Buddha nature or enlightenment. The Zen experience is inherently mystical, being beyond intellectualization or verbalization, pointing directly to the nature of existence. Buddhist mysticism also shines through in the practices of Tibetan Buddhism or Vajrayana. Here, mysticism is woven into a complex tapestry of deity yoga, mandalas, mantras, and tantric rituals. The use of mandalas, intricate diagrams of the cosmos, and mantras, sacred sounds, serve as tools to guide and concentrate the mind in this spiritual journey. These practices aim to hasten the path to enlightenment, often within a single lifetime. In the Theravada tradition, we see a different manifestation of Buddhist mysticism, most notably in the practice of Vipassana, insight meditation. Here, the practitioner seeks to gain a direct understanding of the true nature of reality, focusing on the three marks of existence, impermanence, suffering, and non-self. The Vipassana practitioner uses mindfulness to observe these aspects in their direct experience, leading to deep insights and ultimately liberation from samsara. Despite the differences in practices, a unifying theme in Buddhist mysticism across traditions is the experiential realization of emptiness or shunyata. It is the understanding that all phenomena are void of inherent existence and are independent, which leads to the transcendence of dualistic thinking and a direct experience of reality as it is. Emptiness is often realized through deep meditation and contemplative practices. Mysticism in Buddhism, therefore, offers profound avenues for the direct experience of ultimate reality. Whether it's Zen direct pointing, Vajrayana's deity practices, or Theravada's mindfulness, the mystical practices of Buddhism provide unique and authentic paths to spiritual awakening and liberation. Bodhidharma was a 5th or 6th century monk who is traditionally credited as the transmitter of Zen, Chang Buddhism, to China. According to Chinese legend, he also began the physical training of the Shaolin monks that led to the creation of Shaolin Kung Fu. Bodhidharma was known for his teachings on meditation and the direct mind, which emphasized personal enlightenment through meditation and mindfulness, rather than through the study of scriptures. His teachings became fundamental to the development of Zen Buddhism. Nagarjuna was an important Buddhist philosopher who lived around the 2nd century CE. He is considered the founder of the Madhyamaka school of Mahayana Buddhism. Nagarjuna is known for his doctrine of emptiness, shunyata, which asserts that all phenomena are empty of self-nature or essence. This concept became a cornerstone of Buddhist mysticism underlining the interdependent and constantly changing nature of reality. Milarepa was a Tibetan yogi, poet, and one of Tibet's most famous spiritual figures. His life story of dramatic transformation, from a revengeful black magician to a deeply enlightened being, is a staple in Tibetan literature. Milarepa is best known for his spontaneous songs and poems, which illustrate his understanding of the teachings of the Buddha and his own mystical experiences. He became a central figure in the Kagyu school of Tibetan Buddhism, symbolizing the possibility of achieving enlightenment in a single lifetime through diligent practice. Jewish Mysticism Judaism as one of the world's most enduring religions, has spawned a wealth of rich, complex, and diverse traditions. One of its most enigmatic, yet captivating aspects, is the tradition of Jewish mysticism, popularly known as Kabbalah. 
stemming from the Hebrew root KBL, which means to receive, Kabbalah is viewed as the received wisdom of divine secrets, the mystical path to experiencing God and understanding the nature of reality. The study and practice of Kabbalah provides a depth and breadth to Jewish thought and spirituality that extends beyond the exoteric commandments and rituals into a metaphysical realm. The earliest origins of Kabbalah can be traced back to the Hekalot and Merkava, mystics of late antiquity, who sought visions and direct experiences of divine realms through complex theurgic rituals. However, Kabbalah, as we know it today, began to take shape in medieval Spain with the appearance of the Sefer HaBahir and Sefer Yetzirah, and culminated in the Zohar, a mystical commentary on the Torah. Authored by the Spanish Kabbalist Moses de Leon in the 13th century, but attributed to the 2nd century Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Zohar is considered the primary text of Kabbalah. A central tenet of Kabbalah is the belief in a multifaceted, dynamic God who transcends the dichotomy of immanence and transcendence. To explain this, Kabbalists develop the doctrine of Sephirot, ten divine emanations of attributes through which God creates, sustains, and governs the world. These Sephirot, arranged on the symbolic tree of life, also represent different aspects of the human psyche and pathways to spiritual realization. Kabbalah also provides a cosmology of creation. It teaches that the universe originated through a process called Tzimtzum, divine self-contraction, and then the Orein Sof, infinite divine light, was channeled into the universe through the Sephirot. However, Due to the divine light's intensity, the vessels of the Sephirot shattered, scattering holy sparks throughout the universe. This is known as Shavirat HaKalim, or breaking of the vessels. The subsequent task of humans, according to Kabbalah, is Tikkun Olam, or repairing the world. This is accomplished by liberating and elevating the divine sparks trapped in the material world through the performance of mitzvot, commandments, and acts of loving-kindness, thereby restoring unity to the divine realm. The Lurianic Kabbalah, founded by Isaac Luria in the 16th century in Safed, further develops these ideas and has a profound influence on Jewish mysticism. Lurianic Kabbalah became the dominant form of Jewish mysticism, influencing not only religious practices, but also cultural and social life, particularly among Ashkenazi Jews. Hasidism, which emerged in Eastern Europe in the 18th century, brought Kabbalistic ideas into the heart of Jewish communal life. Founded by Israel ben Eliezer, also known as the Baal Shem Tov, Hasidism emphasizes devikut, cleaving to God, joy, and love of God as the means to spiritual enlightenment. In this movement, Kabbalistic teachings became accessible and practical for every Jew, not just the intellectual elite. Today, Kabbalah continues to be a vibrant tradition within Judaism, and it has also found a broad audience in the wider non-Jewish spiritual community. Organizations like the Kabbalah Center have popularized Kabbalistic teachings, attracting students from diverse backgrounds. From ancient rituals to medieval texts, and from the mystical cosmologies to Hasidic celebrations, Kabbalah remains a vital strand in the Jewish spiritual fabric, an esoteric tradition that continually breathes new life into Judaism's exoteric practices and one's understanding of the Divine. Moses de Leon was a Spanish rabbi and a Kabbalist who is best known for his pivotal work, the Zohar, Book of Splendor, which is widely considered the most important work of Kabbalah. 
De Leon attributed the work to the second-century rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, though modern scholars believe De Leon himself to be the primary author. The Zohar provides a mystical commentary on the Torah, introducing and exploring concepts central to Kabbalistic thought, such as the Ten Sefirot and the dynamics of divine creation and revelation. Known as the Ari, Lion, Isaac Luria is one of the most influential figures in Jewish mysticism. Luria developed a complex system of Kabbalistic thought, often referred to as Lurianic Kabbalah. His teachings, only transmitted to his disciples, particularly Chaim Vital, included innovative concepts such as Tzimtzum, divine contraction, and Tikkun Olam, repairing the world. Lurianic Kabbalah has greatly influenced subsequent Jewish mysticism, philosophy, and folklore. Commonly known as the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Israel Ben Elysia is the founder of Hasidism, a religious revivalist movement incorporating Kabbalistic mysticism into a practical and accessible form. Hasidism emphasizes piety, joy, and personal relationship with God, and it brought Kabbalistic concepts to the broader Jewish population. The Baal Shem Tov's teachings were often communicated through parables and stories, making mystical concepts relatable and understandable to all. His spiritual leadership has shaped the course of Jewish history, with Hasidism remaining a significant force for Jews today. At the heart of Islam, there exists a mystical path known as Sufism, or Tasawuf, as it is called in Arabic. Sufism represents the introspective spiritual aspect of Islam that focuses on the direct personal experience of the Divine. It moves beyond the literal interpretation of the Quran and the five pillars of Islam, seeking a more profound understanding of God and the Self. This journey within is navigated through love, selfless service, and an immersive contemplative practice aiming for an experiential realization of the unity of existence. The term Sufi is believed to derive from the Arabic word Suf, meaning wool, reflecting the austere woolen garb early practitioners wore. However, the essence of Sufism is encapsulated in the word's other potential root, Safa, meaning purity. This path is an ongoing quest for spiritual purification, a transformative journey leading to the essence of reality. The exact origins of Sufism are a subject of scholarly debate, yet more agree that it has been a part of Islam since the early stages, profoundly influenced by the Quran and the practices and sayings or hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. Over the centuries, Sufism developed into a comprehensive system encompassing doctrines, rituals, ethics, poetry, and an extensive network of orders known as tariqas, each tracing their spiritual lineage back to the Prophet. At the heart of Sufi practice is the ikra, the remembrance of God, often expressed through rhythmic recitation of God's names, prayer, or sacred poetry. The objective of dikra is to quiet the egoic self, enabling the seeker's heart to awaken to the divine presence within and all around. The Mevlevi order, founded by the followers of the famed Sufi poet Rumi, is known for the Sema ceremony, a ritual dance of whirling dervishes representing the mystical journey towards divine love and unity. Sufism proposes a spiritual cosmology where the human heart is regarded as the mirror reflecting divine reality. The Sufi path involves polishing this heart mirror through moral and spiritual practices to perceive the divine attributes reflected within. This purification process, often depicted as an inner journey traversing various spiritual stations called Mahamat and states or Ahual, 
aims for the realization of Tawhid, the unity of all existence. Sufi teachings have profoundly influenced Islamic art, literature, culture, and society over the centuries. The wealth of Sufi literature, particularly poetry, has been a vehicle for expressing and transmitting profound mystical experiences, often employing symbolic and allegorical language. Sufi literature resonates with the longing for union with the divine and the joy of spiritual realization. Sufism represents the mystical heart of Islam, a path that invites the seeker to discover the divine within their own heart and the heart of existence. It reminds us that at the core of every religion there is a mystical truth, a truth that transcends sectarian differences and points towards ultimate reality, the unity of existence, and to boundless love. Rabia al adawiya often simply referred to as Rabia of Basra, is one of the most prominent early female Sufi saints. Born into extreme poverty and sold into slavery, Rabia's spiritual devotion eventually led to her freedom. Rabia is best known for introducing the concept of divine love, or Mahaba, which she held as the core of her teachings, teaching that our love for God should be untainted by desires for heavenly rewards or fears of punishment. Her prayers, poems and sayings continue to inspire many on the spiritual path. Abu Hamid al-Ghazali was a Persian theologian, philosopher and mystic who significantly influenced both Islamic philosophy and Sufism. Initially a critic of Sufism, Al-Ghazali underwent a profound spiritual crisis and transformation that led him to embrace and later become a prominent advocate of Sufism. His most famous work, The Revival of the Religious Sciences, integrates legalistic Islam with a mystical Sufism aiming to demonstrate their intrinsic unity. Rumi was a 13th century Persian poet, Islamic jurist, theologian, and mystic. Rumi is one of the most widely read poets in the world today, his work transcending national and ethnic borders. Rumi's poetry beautifully articulates the longing for union with the divine, the journey of the soul, and the joy and pain of love. Rumi was also the founder of the Mevlevi order, often known as the Whirling Dervishes, which continues to practice the Sema ceremony, a form of devotional dance and music aimed at achieving spiritual union with the Divine. Rumi's most significant work, the Masnavi, is often referred to as the Quran in Persian and is considered a masterpiece of spiritual literature. That concludes Mysticism Part 2. In our next and final video, Mysticism Part 3, we will examine mysticism outside of organized religion and how and why the mystic path is often taken up and practiced by so-called ordinary people.